kindly settle down we'll be starting off can everybody hear me chal raha hai ye wala mic hello hello iski background noise piche se aa rahi hai zara cancel kar lo acha assalam alaikum everyone and a very good morning to all of you on behalf of islamabad policy research institute i would like to welcome uh, tariq malik sahab uh, who's chairman nadra and who's very kindly agreed to deliver a lecture on a very important subject of reforms at uh, nadra uh, so thank you very much for your time and agreeing to uh, participate over here uh, just to briefly introduce islamabad policy research institute it was uh, established in 1999 by mushayid hussain sahab at the ministry of information since then we've come a very long way in terms of our work in terms of our uh, reforms as well which we undertook in uh, 2020 uh, it is focused on national security and uh, we have been producing a pre journal as one of our main products which is very important in terms of the css preparations and overall in pakistan academia uh, last couple of years back because of the changing global environment and the nature of the think tanks we undertook 3d reforms at epri which meant datafication digitalization and disruption under the disruption we brought in young people to be part of the think tank and the policy community uh, part part of our digitalization strategy we also ensured that epri had a very strong digital presence and in the datafication we have been recently using data science tools and new data methods uh, for our policy input uh, we have two essential uh, goals here at epri one we provide actionable policy input to the national security establishment and the second we introduce uh, new ideas including the dialogues with different stakeholders which includes the strategic communications for the government as well um, with that i would also like to introduce uh, a little bit more details about uh, um, the chairman nadra he was recently reappointed as chairman nadram before that he was uh, the chief technical advisor at the undp where he was advising on digital governance to 130 plus member states across five regions spread over the world wide uh, prior to joining undp he served world bank as senior technical consultant as well he has a long long background in the digital side and in terms of the professional he has a very lengthy career he is also the 10 core members of the technical expert groups of world bank who supported client countries with id planning and implementation his name was included in the world's 100 most influential people in digital government by european think tank he was also named among top 100 digital influencers in the digital community by one world identity a uh, new york based independent identity research start and strategy think tank focused on cyber security digital commerce and risk management before join world bank uh, tarik malik sahab helped uh, various government to optimize use of big data and advanced data analytics from platform of para data these are all the things that you've probably heard me talk about recently at epri where we have a new way where we want to in- introduce data science tools at uh, in the national security science uh, with that i would like to welcome tarik malik sir to deliver his lecture uh, the format will be he will be uh, giving a uh, prepared presentation and then we will have um, i think a few minutes for question and answers i do know that he has to leave early thank you very much thank you very much uh, sen nadim for the kind introduction <clears throat> uh, it's quite an honor and privilege to be talking uh, at this uh, august platform uh, which was uh, actually initially set up by mushayid hussain mushayid hussain sahab was my trainer when i was studying in qaid azam university and writing in muslim newspaper and uh, so he was editor over there <laughs> so um just uh, you know a few words about uh, logistics that uh, it's good that we are starting on time i have to leave at 11:45 we have so much to talk about uh, uh, when we talk about nadra uh, reforms and strategy so most of the stuff that we will talk is about reforms strategy and future and little bit about the past i'm not going to dig a lot uh, on the history but you know it's been 7 8 months when i took over again after a very competitive uh, worldwide process that uh, prime minister has uh, solicited and what attracted me to uh, come back to the future as i say is uh, uh, is meritocracy uh, in pakistan that prime minister has appointed me on merit and that was my 
first um, you know that was my first concern or that was my first uh, inclination uh, to join back to nadra when i left pakistan it was the violation of merit when i won a phd scholarship in uh, in european union and the scholarship was actually um, wasted uh because the government could not process the visa on time and so i left the country so <laughs> the real uh, you know thing uh, right now to come back was the the uh, trust deficit which was created between me and uh, the state was restored back and i said okay i will say goodbye to united nation so uh, let's talk about nadra very quickly mm. this would be the structure of the presentation uh, a very brief introduction about nadra you already know about uh, what nadra does how it was uh, created uh, but we will talk about governance through digital transformation that's what i was helping 130 countries with in united nation and that's what is our agenda for next few uh, years what is our identity management stra strategy uh, what are the citizen centric reforms i have introduced in last 7 months or so um, how nadra is important about uh, to ensure national security and what is our international business strategy and i will conclude on new vision for digital pakistan um it is a best kept secret so far that nadra does not get any penny or dollar or rupee from government of pakistan so since 2007 uh when i first joined 2007 and 8 we came up with a model where we do national and international projects earn the revenue pay the salaries of over 20000 employees do technology upgrades and then uh, you know provide subsidy to the poor in the form of free id card your first id card is free of cost so chairman nadra uh, i don't like the title i th i hope one day there would be uh, a woman uh, who would leave this institution as well so we are we have written to the government to change this title to chairperson of nadra uh, we has couple of hats uh, by the virtue of nadra ordinance i am registrar general of pakistan so on each identity document you know my signature is there on id card on uh, family registration certificate so um and i am also chief executive officer of nadra technologies limited that is a, a, a limited company <clears throat> that we formed uh, back in 2000 which does the international business and earns revenue for pakistan so according to the rules of business 1973 nadra is not attached department of ministry of interior uh, this is a kind of confusion that you know uh, we come under ministry of interior we come under ministry of interior because our summaries are routed to prime minister otherwise i am appointed by prime minister and uh, i am responsible to the independent board of nadra these are five industry uh, leaders who uh, go through the same competition of selection uh, just like i did and then appointed by the government of pakistan so it is a sort of semi autonomous organization and chairman nadra is appointed by the prime minister of pakistan so there is a, a, a usually when i become a chairman i i enforce that uh, legislative framework and usually there is some friction between government when the government wants or state wants to capture the uh, institution you know i normally resist and you see uh, fireworks uh, as long as i'm there so expect some fireworks nadra uh, authority is an authority for a reason so uh, which i explained that it is semi autonomous organization uh, its core job is registration 
of all kind of registration, making the databases of person, things, uh, you know, uh, and other databases also. It is structured into eight regions for better management. Uh, it has 761 registration centers divided in eight regions. These are static centers like Secretary of State offices, like uh, government uh, or UK's NHA offices, NH, uh, uh, sorry, National Health Insurance offices, or Canada's service uh, centers, you know, citizen service centers. But we have 761. And my goal is to have uh, an office in each Tessie lower precinct, precinct, uh, precinct of uh, Pakistan. Uh, we are almost there. <clears throat> we have uh, one of the largest citizen uh, databases in the world. We had now India has uh, more uh, big uh, has bigger database because their population is more than us. But this started after we registered 75 million people. We uh, provide technology solutions. We'll talk about that, and uh, we have uh, a, a mobile vans also. When we look at the uh, through the lens of number, we have over 20,000 employees, 761 st strate uh, static offices, but wherever uh, people cannot reach to our office, we go to them. And we have mobile vans, we have man pack units, we have mountaineers also with the registration kits, registering the people in majestic mountain of mountains of Pakistan and talking to them on behalf of the state. These are those people who have never come on ground and they live on mountain. Um, so uh, we have 11 mega centers and about 18 women only staffed centers in the areas where cultural norms dictate that uh, men should not register women. So we have all staffed women from data entry operator to, uh, 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 to the manager. Uh, 100 plus servers, we do not rely on the fiber optics uh, connectivity. We have uh, the DVB-RCS state of art system, uh, which actually uh, provides a bandwidth on the satellite. So all our of, uh, offices are connected in real time. We have registered 136 million uh, people, 96% of adult population of Pakistan, when we say adult, 18 and above, uh, which uh, constitutes to the universal coverage, because there is a gap 5 to 7%, which would always be there because every day, uh, you know, uh, youngsters uh, are turning from 17 to 18. So, um, and we have 189 million identities. These are other identities as well, children, Afghan refugees, aliens. So I have come introduced uh, an inclusive registration policy whereby, you know, everybody would be registered, but the identity instrument would be different. Pakistanis will get Pakistani ID card, overseas Pakistani will get NICOP or POC, Afghans will get POR, uh, aliens will get alien registration card. But uh, we register everybody by uh, recording their unique attributes, uh, physical attributes, 10 fingerprints and digital photograph. And now we are going to include Iris as well. So we have a system that uh, has 132 million facial images, but our uh, throughput is 40 million matches per second and 1.2 billion fingerprints. And our throughput is 55 million matches per second. These last two statistics uh, uh, actually enhances state capacity to deliver transparent and accountable solution backed by identity management system. And we are making these service online, uh, available on mobile. So 2.3 million people have applied on uh, uh, from 195 countries and their identities are renewed, uh, processed seamlessly. 
a little bit history um, the national uh, the id card system or shanakti card system was launched in 1973 by zulfikar ali bhutto and then in 2002 uh, two organization nra and uh, registration centers were combined uh, uh, sorry national registration center and national database organizations were combined and we started issuing teslan based id card it is refined plastic plus in 2008 multi biometric registration was uh, uh, rolled out so between 1973 and 2008 there were many who uh, got Pakistani ID card. So you may hear that, you know, whether these Afghans, why do they have ID card? Because at that time, technology was not matured and they are now weeded from the system. We did off. Uh, 2012, we brought smart card, which is a chip based uh, card. It's a passive chip. And so it has 36 security features and it is one of the most secure card. Un people cannot uh, forge it. Uh, it and uh, now in 2022, this year, we are moving towards digital ID, inshallah. So other identity documents we produce, uh, we are helping, uh, uh, we are producing to, uh, we are uh, cooperating with, uh, collaborating with local governments to come up, birth certificate, death certificate, family registration certificates, and so on and so forth. So here is our governance through digital transformation. When I came in, uh, I did uh, restructure the organization. If, if I have 35 or so DGs, uh, I mean, a month has 30 days, I can't meet all DGs. So I restructured it and I have uh, seven C-level executives and that's how I manage. And I am responsible uh, or and accountable to the board, Nadra board, who meets every, uh, after every uh, bi-monthly meeting and they scrutinize my performance. Since I came in, I did some uh, these organizational reforms and some citizen-centric reforms, which is the topic of our uh, discussion today. So... Uh, I found that there was a lot of political influence uh, in the organization. People are appointed, transfer, posting, you know, uh, and their promotions is based on uh, political expediency. So we introduced test-based hiring and I uh, approached to 72 universities and I told them, they, uh, their vice chancellors, that they should share the repository of their best top 10 performing uh, uh, alumni is and so that uh, so that they can uh, apply on the test so we uh, first of all you know we have developed a performance base uh, actually um, uh, system uh, we uh, and we hired those people so that we have we have to come up with tomorrow's leadership so i said no problem if they don't have skills i need character and we will train them for the skill so and now we are involving Oxford University Research Group to do some uh, study placebo effect, uh, uh, like the people who got treatment by new methodology and the people who are already in the system so that we have an evidence-based policy that by make it, by doing this reform, uh, what, effect, what digital dividends we have reaped. Uh, so... Employee satisfaction and performance, uh, we have uh, come up with KPIs and uh, we have uh, introduced just a reward and recognition system. So uh, employees, for example, uh, there is no office uh, of the government that works on 24 by seven basis. So we have some offices who work 24 by seven. So if an employee walks an extra mile, the uh, revenue we share uh, goes to that employee as well. So the performance level has increased. We have uh, uh, introduced, uh, uh, there was a problem of unjust reward and recognition promotion so we have stopped that and uh, what we have done is that we have started developing a database that if an 
a political or any influence comes in we record it and then when that person comes in that you know maine iski safarish ki thi to hum usko batate hain ki isi wajah se ye disqualify ho gaya so about 53 or so cases we have informed nadra employees and we have impl- uh, informed their political backers that these are disqualified because you asked for their promotion so it is going very well so far i am getting lot of flack about this and and uh, 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 but we are removing the political influence from that then um, the the technology was not upgraded since 2013 14 when i left uh, we have very old versions of uh, softwares were running and i uh, set up an uh, information security uh, department in 2013 i came back and it, it was not non existence so we were lucky that uh, we our database was secure but we have enacted it again and we have upgraded from 2014 13 14 to, uh, to, to uh, 2021 service service delivery breakdowns were there and uh, we have uh, come up with uh, an innovative way to connect all the system all the offices and scrutinize employees uh, uh, by making sure that the service delivery is optimized and uh, then we uh, had an initiative to review the policy and reforms also so what i did is that i opened my department to social media electronic media print media all kind of platforms and then we used ai and data analytics to look at uh, to listen to the voice and do some sentiment analysis of the citizen of pakistan who, who are getting the service and when we listen to the data uh you can only listen to the data when you allow the data to speak <laughs> so um we found out that there were there were policy biases there were algorithmic bias uh, so which we removed and we are going to discuss that uh, at the policy level look at that this is a uh, command and control center and you can see that uh, you know we all the centers are connected and uh, we know now that average time to process a citizen is how much we can say uh, we can tell that which employee is performing best and which oic office in charge is performing best best and how many cards are processed and you can see that which centers have long queues so we call uh them and we uh fix the problem and this data is being used for performance monitoring so this has become the first department who is actually listening listening to the citizen and i'll come to that that how uh why it was necessary identity management strategy is that a lot of people say that everything should be in nadra database everything should be linked with uh, uh, id card this is an over simplistic uh, um, statement i guess or uh, i think we have to protect the civil liberties of the citizen of pakistan and so i ca- uh, carry a heavy cross on my shoulder where i have to enhance the state capacity on the one side but protect the privacy uh, of the citizen of pakistan as well on the other side so how we do it our architecture is simple we have some basic fields of the of your personal information uh, in the database so which you provide self report you give us the consent and you come to us we capture that information and we guard it very passionately and then we have other databases which other organizations are maintaining so for example if i have to find out how many non tax payers are in the country i have hooks to attach my information with fbr's withholding data if i have to find out whether the electoral roll is transparent or account uh, or uh, free and fair all i have to do is that l- attach the electoral a uh, list with our database and reconcile it and so on and so forth so we bring transparency but we don't uh, put everything on the id card 
what is our strategy our strategy the first layer is uh, the recording of unique uh, attributes for that we are using biometrics because biometrics are used to record your uh, unique attributes facial recognition uh, a face and now iris also we are working on and then there are checks on data processing biographic information and bio biometric information on that we have nadra's identity management uh, which has uh, uh, various uh, you know uh, services like id card we moved from plastic to smart to mobile to digital id we our passports are issued based on identity layer so this identity layer is very important nations have governments governments have people people have identities and if you can if you want to roll out citizen centric services then you have to uh, ensure that each citizen is unique and that service is unique as well and so so forth uh, uh, you know we have election management system uh, civil registration system we have a social protection regime uh, digital uh, based on digital identity we uh, do the data analytics forensics advanced research and border control which is a national security framework i have put social protection as a national uh, under national security framework because i feel that uh, social security ensuring social security is part of national security as well acha aage isko i think it's stuck so these are our service uh, delivery channels we are moving away from form based uh, but uh, you know earlier it was form based application then you go to the nadra center online application mobile phones and then we are moving into digital transformation but uh, recording an identity is a, is a, is a, is uh, is a tedious process and we have to comply and we have to comply with the international standards so everything can't be digitized these are our national projects you already know so i won't go into the detail we have done we have 39 right now when i came 47 priority number 1 project so all the governments department agencies rely on us we still have 39 on our uh, on our uh, radar and uh, we are working on it uh, but just to give you how we do the project it's a very important because we work with bureaucracy and they don't know that what are our timeline so each project go through uh, conceptualization phase design and prototyping complete testing and then support and maintenance there are lots of projects which we are doing but there are some projects which i want to showcase uh, national immunization management system is called national immunization management system for a reason it is not covid specific lot of people don't understand that when a crisis hits pakistan we uh, i don't know if it's a good statement we take that opportunity to actually analyze that crisis and develop the system which are holistic in nature and which are futuristic they do not address only crisis so hence when uh, uh, covid hit pakistan yeah we have done an excellent job and we got lots of award and praise you can read about it but the real story is that i want to use that system to track whether each child is vaccinated or not you know i want to track that uh, whether uh, you know the, if there is another outbreak this system would be able to cater to that as well so the system is designed in a way that all kind of urbanization like polio urbanization can also be integrated into it so now it's the time when the covid will subside we will integrate 
into that. A SaaS emergency crash uh, cash program, 179.2 billion uh, rupees have been dispersed. But when we were devising Benazir income support program, uh, because uh, you know uh, to address the you know uh, poorest of poor women, ke unka chula jalta rahe, to we devised it in a way that you can add various products into it. So Nadra's forte is that just like our database, we develop the systems or databases with open architecture so that you can attach various hooks, products to that program. So this program has, uh, you know, actually uh, one of the flagship program of uh, various international institutions. Uh, so we are, it is powered by Natra. Um, we rolled out Pakistan online visa system. It's not the sharpest knives in my project, but uh, we are trying to remove uh, to improve it. So this actually provides a 25, uh, 24 uh, hours visa uh, to uh, 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 to anybody across the world. So it has helped um, tourists and the businessmen and women to come to Pakistan and, uh, you know, uh, uh, without, uh, uh, you know, going through the bureaucratic uh, procedures. We have rolled out succession certificate. Uh, the beauty of Nadra system is that not only you have unique number, your family has unique number also, which uh, nobody, nobody in the world uh, has no no country has it so now we are coming up with the products which uh, uh, which are based on our strength for example india cannot come up with a succession certificate application because they do not uh, capture family data they don't have family tree so uh, this has helped to uh, reduce 30% load on lower courts and so the property is uh, distributed automatically if there is no property dispute. And this has empowered women also to become the property owner. Um, there are 75,000 people uh, across the world. They visit embassies mm -hmm. to uh, process power of attorney. We have launched digital power of attorney so they can do that uh, at their uh, from the comfort of their homes. This is our flagship project, which uh, I just, uh, after this meeting, I'm meeting with the uh, Minister of Finance, handing him over uh, the results of this artificial intelligence based machine learning uh, uh, data analytics uh, uh, initiative. First time in the history of Pakistan, uh, you know, we applied artificial intelligence to find out non taxpayers. How did we do it? I tried in 2012, whereby I used linear regression model, and I identified 3.5 million richest of rich who have everything but except one, and that was NTN, national tax number. So this time we have identified many, I will let Prime Minister to disclose the figure, but crores of non-taxpayers, if we uh, get the money from them if they pay the taxes, their due taxes or minimum tax. Pakistan can say goodbye to IMF. We can collect trillion of rupees. So, uh, and I feel that's not a technical problem. This is a problem of political will. Uh, um, I tried in 2013, but unfortunately, rich is very well protected in Pakistan. So, we will see if they will collect it or not. How did we do it? It's very important to understand. This has never been done in Pakistan because we did not uh, use uh, AI, but this time we have used AI on real data, on withholding data. So what we got is that we got uh, um, existing taxpayers data, amount of tax paid and income declared, and we did, uh, uh, and we used machine learning to do asset profiling. If you have arm licenses, if you have expensive vehicles, if you live in posh area, and uh, then we looked at your behavior 
profiling. Uh, you travel a lot, uh, you pay high utility bill, and so on and so forth. Then we put it in mathematical model, and uh, that model tells us that uh, how a good uh, taxpayer's profile is. He has all these things, but he pays the tax. But how many good people we are missing? <laughs> it predicts on that also. And we have predicted many. Now FBR has to apply the tax regime and enforcement uh, regime and, uh, you know, find out that how they will recover money from them. Similarly, other projects, Sayat Saurlat program, 32.5 million health insurance beneficiaries. And at the back end, Nadra's analytics is running that who is eligible to get that. So these are some citizen-centric reforms. I told you internal organizational reforms, but these are the reforms. When I was talking that if when we ally, allowed data to speak and we listen to the data, here is what data uh, 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 told us that public was unaware of process uh, of a process of ID card. Uh, and so we established public engagement department. It's a new department which consistently engages with the public and we enhance public service efficiency at the center. Uh, we uh, included madadgars. We introduced the concept of mystery customer where we would take the university students and they will go and they uh, will uh, process their ID card and then they will send the report back to the public engagement department. Um, Women registration was a problem. Uh, you know, there was a gap of uh, 14 to 15 percent between men and women registration. We have reduced it to 9.65 per, uh, percent. And single mother registration, woman name uh, change was a problem. So two policies we have rolled out and you can go and read at the BBC internationally. Also, they recognize because there was these policies when men made by men, they uh, are prepared through the lens of men. So I created an inclusive registration department headed by the woman. And uh, so they go out on the field and we conduct e-kacharis and various platforms and we listen and we found out that the single, it was difficult to uh, for single mothers to register their children. And it was difficult when women get married, you know, usually they change their name with the last name as the husband name. And uh, so we saw that uh, there was no requirement in the law. Uh, so when they separate from the husband, they have problem that the separated husband or spouse would not allow them to actually change it back. So we changed it, uh, these policies. Uh, there was a, a very tedious complaint resolution process. So we uh, rolled out centralized complaint management system where you can log on the complaint. I have introduced a whistleblower system also. And then we'll, so we are uh, addressing those uh, complaints. Identity for everyone. So anybody coming from the border of Pakistan, we are now recording. If they don't have anything, we take their fingerprints and photograph. So we have about 30,000 people who cross Torkham and Chaman border, and uh, they have done nothing, but they were coming for the treatment on humanitarian crisis. So we know their record also. So if anybody applies for a new ID card, it will come through that uh, uh, verification as well. And uh, we had lack of Nadra centers. I told you in the last 200 days, we have added 100 more new centers in the lowest precinct of the tehsils. Uh, these are some of the slides where we are telling that, uh, you know, we conducted Kuli Kacheri, we have campaigns, and we have added 75 new mobile vans with state-of-art uh, equipment, added new centers on national security. Uh, we are helping uh, the national security institutions to actually 
come up with the data analytics based studies. And so we have uh, various uh, databases we are collecting like criminal database, like uh, 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 sex offenders, uh, you know, registry and so on and so forth. And we are telling them that, okay, you know, if a certain narrative is cre created uh, uh, about a particular crime, here is the what data says. Uh, we have helped to secure the borders of Pakistan. So we got rid of PISIS system, which was uh, uh, given by United States of America. And we have now better system. It's called integrated border management system. So similarly, we are in process of computerizing the arm license system. Who issues the arms license, who gets arms, where the arms are coming from. So there is a complete database base behind it so that, uh, you know, uh, we have an accountability. And then we have some uh, forensic applications. Uh, I just want uh, to inform that our biometric system is civilian biometric system. It's not a criminal forensic uh, system. So you may hear in the news that, okay, you know, uh, fingerprints were not matched, Nadra could not identify a photograph. And that is because it is civilian biometric database, unless the uh, evidence is equivalent to how we register you, uh, it's very difficult to uh, identify forensic database, forensic biometric uh, records the rollover fingerprints and takes the mugshot. We don't register people as criminals, so we have a flat fingerprint and uh, you know passport like IKO compliant uh, uh, photograph. So that's why uh, it's difficult to identify. But we still help in the case of suicide bombing. If a terrorist has to be identified, then we take their fingerprints just like we are registering and we are able to help the government, uh, national institution. We have rolled out in last few months foreign national security uh, application in which we are integrating various systems and we want to empower government to inform who is coming, who is expected to arrive and where they are going. So this is very much appreciated by a lot of other countries like China and uh, other countries who, who uh, 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 whose nationals are coming and we uh, government can provide them the security. Due to this, uh, these achievements, we are able to get a lot of international business, and these are our projects. We are helping Fiji to conduct free and fair elections, believe it or not. So we uh, we help them to come up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, voter list underpinning one person, one identity, one vote. We help S Sudan to come up a complete civil registration system in Arabic, and we learned from that experience and. We, I got jealous, so I upgraded my system because I uh, their system looked better than us. So it there are some digital dividends of these initiatives. Nigeria's identity management system uh, backbone is Nadra. Bangladesh driver's license, Sri Lanka scanning and digitization of uh, citizen registration. Kenya's all passport uh, uh, are produced by Nadra technology. And we just won the project uh, of Somalia as well. So we are going to start working in Somalia as well. European Union has a system that if somebody comes uh, to uh, their countries with forged documents, then they we developed uh, the system for them, how to identify them, how to come up with electronic travel document and all that. So they are rolling out in, I don't know, 22, 23 countries right now. Uh, and we were the first who worked with UNHCR to come up with biometric uh, registration of refugees as well. So we are moving to other uh, institutions and international organization. I had good meeting with World Bank also. So there are some other projects coming up. These are our strategic partners. Um, lots of 
international companies, service providers, international institutions, governments, and so uh, they keep us busy and we learn from their experience and we share our experience also. So we are expanding. Uh, there is a lot of criticism that why my employees are always on the plane and you know I'm traveling also. Uh, nobody gives you the business uh, if you don't move and go to their countries. So we have a team that uh, bids competitively on these pro uh, projects. Last but not least, this is my vision for uh, Digital Pakistan. And this vision is customized to Pakistan because this is what I presented in United Nations. And it had a lot of resonance uh, among the countries. We want to include everybody digitally, everybody in Pakistan. So universal coverage and accessibility. Uh, our design framework is uh, simple, convenient, robust, secure, responsive, and sustainable. And we want to make sure that digital ID is uh, the nucleus of all the reforms. Because uh, bando ki shanaht ke bagher, aap citizen centric koi wo initiative nahi la sakte. When I was in United Nations, I found out that the foundational systems there are th three types of foundational system: digital census, which I propose to the government that don't do the census old way, do it digital civil registration and vital statistics and national id these are called foundational system if you have these foundational systems intact then you can roll out digital public goods and i told uh, uh, in uh, united nation i convinced them that we have spent 70 years or so enhancing state capacity which is good which is good jargon, but it is now time to think from the citizen eyes to roll out digital public goods. And that's what Nadra is doing. That's what we are doing. Agas citizen ki eyes se dekhenge, to wo kya chata hai? They want to travel, they need registration, they want to drive freedom to move, drive karna chate hai. they want to register their life events, they want health benefit, they want uh, uh, they want ke unka right of vote compromise na ho, property ownership is a big problem in Africa, so a conflict ko khatam karna ho, to property ko rights de de, uh, state should be able to collect the taxes, we should be able to roll out social protection program, Mukhtara Mai, Mukhtara Mai na hoti, agar ID card na hota, domestic violence ki report uh, file karne ka uske paas right hona chahiye, financial inclusion programs or e-justice abhi hum Supreme Court ko bhi uh, keh rahe hain aur High Court ko bhi keh rahe hain ke bhi hum aapke saath kaam karne ke liye tayyar hain, because I feel court is not a place, court is a service. So, uh, in tamam me hum kahi na kahi intervention hum ne dal di hai. To ye humara digital Pakistan ka vision hai ki isme products, is suite of products ko bhaate jai aur is pe kaam karte jai aur hum tamam ministries ke federal secretaries ko maine ye state, ye last slide hai, ye uh, concept bechne ki koshish ki hai. and there is some uh, they are in listening mode that we have various threads of government and uh, the legal ID can work under the constitution of Pakistan, which is a social contract. And in the digital governance ki transformation will be various digital technologies, then people-centric development will be. And these derived values, that state capacity should enhance for improved service delivery, this is not just a nare. Nadra can tell you about the data on the basis of the data, how many state institutions have strengthened. Social contract strengthen करने का मतलब ये है कि हम बता सकते हैं कि इतनों को एहसास पेमेंट हुई है, इतनों को इंसाफ मिला है. We can roll out target subsidies and protection. We can combat corruption and financial crimes by ensuring KYC and combating money laundering. Effective disaster management कर सकते हैं and smart government को लेके आ सकते हैं. These are the derived value. So there, uh, in this direction, we are moving and. Uh, 
I would need the support of the state institution and the people of Pakistan to get there. If I won't get there, I won't. I would get out of the country. Thank you very much. <laughs> जी क्विक क्वेश्चंस अब हम आपसे पूछ लेते हैं जी सर वेलकम सीइंग यू आपका बैकहेड जी सर जी 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 सर टू क्विक ऑब्जर्वेशंस रिगार्डिंग द लेटर ऑफ सिटीजंस दे ट्रैवल एंड ऑल दैट यस व्हिच आई टू मेक यू विल इसके बारे में क्या सोचते हैं रीजन ये है कि मुल्क में 24 परसेंट के पास बैंकिंग कवरेज जी बाकी सेवेंटी सिक्स परसेंट के पास बैंकिंग कवरेज है जी जी तो आप उसको कैसे डिजिटाइज करेंगे कि वो आप उस तक पहुंच सके यही हो जाए कि हवाला सिस्टम इज मोर एफिशियंट जी बिल्कुल तो हमारे हम के के लिए हमने स्टेट uh, बैंक के साथ हमको uh, काम कर रहे हैं एंड uh, उन्होंने भी कुछ ऐसे प्रोडक्ट्स लॉन्च किए हैं कि जो न सिर्फ फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन को बढ़ाते हैं बल्कि ये मनी uh, लॉन्ड्रिंग को कम बैठ कर भी करते हैं uh, और वो ऐसी आसानियां पैदा कर रहे हैं जैसे रोशन डिजिटल अकाउंट हो गया या और जो इनिशिएटिव्स हैं कि जिसमें डॉक्यूमेंटेड इकोनमी जो है उसको अप्रिशिएट किया जा सके बट फ्रॉम नादराज पर्सपेक्टिव वी आर जस्ट यू नो वी कैन इंश्योर कि जो लोग बाहर जा रहे हैं वो डॉक्यूमेंट हो और वो डॉक्यूमेंट हमने नहीं करने हमने उनको सोल्यूशन बना के दे दिया एफ आई ए ने करने एफ आई ए अब उसमें कैसे करता है स्टेट बैंक के साथ अब स्टेट बैंक के साथ भी हम कुछ ऐसे प्रोडक्ट्स बना रहे हैं कि वो भी इसकी मॉनिटरिंग कर सकें लेकिन ये है कि इट टेक्स थ्री फोर इंस्टीट्यूशन टू वर्क टूगेदर टू कॉम्बैट दिस जी My question is that Pakistan is fortunate and unfortunately is home to a large number of migrants. Yes, yes. Especially from India, Bangladesh, yes, yes. All other Pakistanis and even the Biharis also are once more people like that. So my question is: Have they all been profiled, or there are still millions of people living in shadows? ये तो किसी को स्टडी करनी पड़ेगी कि हैं कितने लेकिन हमारे पास इंस्ट्रूमेंट है उनको रजिस्टर करने का सो so, एक तो तरीका ये होता है कि कानून से आप उनको रोकें कि हमने ये कह दिया है और अब आपने ये करना है दूसरा है कि यू हैव टू इंसेंटिवाइज देम टू कम अप इन द सिस्टम सो दिस कार्ड नेम विच आई डोंट लाइक मैं तो यहाँ था नहीं एलियन कार्ड रखती है उसका तहफुज इमकान या ग्रीन कार्ड या कुछ नाम रखना चाहिए था सो वी हैव इनिशिएटेड असम्बरी टू एक्चुअली चेंज द नेम सो वी आर इंसेंटिवाइजिंग दैम टू रजिस्टर एंड गेट द सेम्स एंड गेट द चिल्ड्रन इन द स्कूल एंड यू नो डू ऑल द थिंग्स ओपन बैंक अकाउंट्स उनको भी फॉर्मल इकोनॉमी में ले आए तो ये इंसेंटिव रिजीम हमने क्रिएट की है 
only what they can't do is that they uh, can't vote and they can't you know stand in election or so jo ke ek citizen ke rights hain to hum unko bhi uh, is dhare mein la rahe hain aur fir unko document kar rahe hain ki agar wo unke paas visa ek certain time ka to visa ya to extend karaye ya fir wo uh, uh, koi aur mechanism kare ki jisse wo documented worker ho jaye to us silsile mein abhi drive shuru ki hai prime minister launched this program i think 3 months back aur log register karne ke liye aa bhi rahe hain ha ji ha acha the sir kuch mahine pehle fi ne reports mein kaha tha ki biometric data na tarah ka hack ho gaya ji ji uski wajah se kaafi had tak jo institution tha kuch had tak controversial ho chuka tha अच्छा एक तो ये है कि इस मुल्क में उन्होंने रिट्रैक्ट भी कर लिया था बाद में एक ये है कि नादरा का डाटा अभी तक हैक नहीं हुआ क्योंकि नादरा का डाटा पेंटाबाइट्स है उसके लिए जहाज लेके आना पड़ेगा आप मतलब वो ऐसे नहीं है कि यूएसबी में डाला जेब में और चले गए यू you नो know, वो जहाज भी बड़ा होना चाहिए दूसरी बात ये है कि नादरा का जो डेटा किसी चार बंदों का किसी ने देख लिया हो स्क्रीनशॉट ले लिया हो हो सकता है हमारे बीस हजार एम्प्लॉयज हैं एंड वी आर स्क्रूटेनाइजिंग देम एंड आई हैव जीरो टॉलरेंस कि किसी की प्राइवेसी अगर हर्ट हुई है तो अभी मुझे 200 दिन नहीं हुए और तीन के करीब लोग फायर हो गए सो देर इज अ प्रोसेस विद इन दिद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थोड़ा सा ये समझना है कि हमारी जो इंफॉर्मेशन सिक्योरिटी और uh, की पॉलिसी है uh, और जो एप्लीकेशन डिजाइन की पॉलिसी है उसमें प्राइवेसी बाई डिजाइन और सिक्योरिटी बाई डिफॉल्ट ये दो प्रिंसिपल हैं तो उसको हम इंश्योर करते हैं बट इट इज अ टफ कंपटीशन यू नो जो इम्पोसिटर्स हैं या जो हैकर्स हैं उनके साथ हम कंपटीशन में रहते हैं तो वो जो उन्होंने स्टेटमेंट दी थी वो फिर उन्होंने रिट्रैक्ट कर ली कुछ किसी का आईडी कार्ड नंबर अगर लीक हो जाता है या किसी का फोटोग्राफ लीक हो जाता है तो वो आइसोलेटेड इंसिडेंट से हम लर्न करते हैं और अपने सिस्टम को जो है वो बेहतर से बेहतर बनाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं लेकिन अल्लाह का शुक्र है या तो हम लकी थे या हम बहुत इंटेलिजेंट हैं कि अभी तक ऐसा नहीं हुआ और हम इसको मजीद अपनी सिक्योरिटी को इंश्योर करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं हेयर एंड देयर छोटे मोटे इंसिडेंट होते रहते हैं और इसीलिए हम ये रिफॉर्म कर रहे हैं कि पॉलिटिकल एक्सपीडियंसी को ख़त्म करें हम प्रोफेशनल लोग लाएँ जो कि कंप्रोमाइज ना हो सकें और उनको अच्छी तनख्वाहें दें इफ वी अर्न बेटर माई थिंग इज के मैं डिस्ट्रीब्यूट एम्प्लॉयज में कर देता हूँ टेक्नोलॉजी के अपग्रेड पे कर लेता हूँ सो दैट इज वर्किंग वेल I have to go because uh, Prime Minister is launching another initiative today, e-passport. That is also backed by a Nadra system. So, uspe mujhe jana. Thank you. Thank you very much. अच्छा अच्छा तो ये भी बहुत सुंदर है हां जी मेरी एनक्लेव जी एनक्लेव 